Make sure we're up and running real quick. Yep, we're working. All right, guys, go right gaming here. Back with another video from Run Eight Train Simulator. Today we're gonna go from West Colton to Mojave. Gonna drop off and pick up some cars in Mojave, but today we'll probably just get to Mojave. Hopefully, if I don't break anything like last time, you know. So let's get going. <clears throat> Do all the cheater buttons here to get everything going. Oh wow, there's like a five second difference between your video and when we're talking. <laughs> I do got that mountain internet. On that live stream, yeah. <laughs> we got Golden Wonder joining us today, he's just chilling. He'll be making fun of me the whole time, so. And Kyle, the conductor. And Kyle, let's not forget about Kyle. <laughs> We need a mod for this game where there's like two monster packs stacked in the cab next to Kyle. Oh, that would be great. Like a uh, four-wheeler magazine. <laughs> it's, it, it's open to an F-150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, these standard, these modern cabs are weird. There's Kyle. Look at him. Hey, he changed his hat. There's probably a monster logo in the front of it. Alright, well, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Got any brakes on? Yeah. Let's knock off these brakes. Should be lined up. We'll see. No promises. Well, Kyle looks like he has a, uh, like a Confederate Civil War hat on. He does, huh? Yeah. Huh. That cab looks a lot better with the tan instead of like a darker color. On yeah. the boards. Yeah. Yeah. This is how they look, just a little bit more trashed, because it's the Union Pacific, you know. So. Put it in run. We'll put it forward. Let's see. Release the brakes. Run one. We'll come off the independent. independent so one thing with this game dude is that uh you can't interact with the controls so that's kind of weird compared to the other games we've played but uh once you get the controls down for everything it's much smoother in my opinion like you actually have to think about it controls are moving it's not you touching them it's you pushing the button on the keyboard yep yep okay we're moving on the rear. I'm coming out of here. It's a bit of a downhill grades. So we'll see what we'll have to do here. We might have to go into dynamics to control it. It's kind of tricky for engineers sometimes. As you can see we're picking up speed. Acceleration. These are really nice to look at when you want to see what your train's doing. If you see plus 25, you're like, oh no, if you're going down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I better do something quick. Let's make sure we got the whole train, huh? Yeah, we got her. Cool. Back to the cab. These cabs are a trip because you can't see very well and you're sitting really high up. It's nice to have a, a unit where you can see decent. Oh, you got a rear end duper. Yeah. Makes life a little easier. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you that just joined, pulling out of West Colton, heading up towards Mojave. <clears throat> I 
Majavi, eh? Yeah, it's got the Majavi. Oh, can't exceed 10 miles an hour coming out of the yard, so that's the only downside of this. Yeah, but it looks like we're going to have to go into dynamics. Go on the setup. So, very light dynamics. see it I'm just kind of watching the screen kind of modulating the dynamics this is tricky when you go up the Mojave sub because uh, you go down and then you climb up so it's like your trains in a dip got any railroad questions throw them in the chat shouldn't you be able to see i-10 <clears throat> off it, the left in real life yeah it's right here i don't think they included it i don't remember we're gonna go over the i-10 right now so we'll see mm. yeah if you make a left up here yeah we're gonna keep going straight and then make a left and go up the mojave sub Man, Kyle, man, he's focused up today. Yeah, look at him. He's actually facing forward for once. I can't believe it. Yeah, he's got an eyeball on the signals, man. Yep. Still not a whole lot of conversation coming out of Kyle, but hey, you know. No, you got mad at him for that Confederate hat, and you yelled at him. Yeah. That's what it is. And then he called you a Yankee, and you know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. The South shall rise again. Okay, whatever, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> you own a mud bogger or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's all a joke, guys. It's all a joke. That is a weird hat, though, to put on a character. As a conductor in a railroad, you know? Yeah. Looks like I'm going to have to start going to throttle. What uh, what unit are you in? It's an SD-70 ACE. 70. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. This one. Yeah, you're going over the tent right here now. Yeah. For anybody who does not live in California, the bridge he's going over, the I-10, I call this the crash corridor. Because I used to have to commute next to this rail yard, and there was always a crash there, like, every day. <laughs> Yeah. There's literally eight lanes, four lanes on each side, and there was always accidents around this bridge. Yeah, so there's a freeway right next to this track right here to the left of it in real life. Not sure why they didn't include that, but it's not like the graphics are, uh, you know, 2022 standard. <laughs> See if we can get a That's little. Nuts, dude. Yep. Let's open the window. It looks like a nice day out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have to listen to the traffic and the beeping and the and the emergency uh, sirens coming to a crash. Yeah. Yep. 
I think in real life there's a big ass Ford dealership off to the left. It was like a big dealership. Uh, yeah, there might have been. From what I remember, it's, uh, there's a street right here to the left with a bunch of old houses. Oh, uh, it's further down then, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think so. So we got slower siding right here. It's like 9,000 feet, so you can fit a good sized train in there. Above in the cab, it says maximum speed 70 miles an hour. So my question to you then is what's the fastest you've ever been on a real train? 73. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so you're, that's the fastest rated speed for any freight train. Um, that's typically like an intermodal stack train. Uh, there's parts where you can hit that speed out where it's perfectly flat and straight. So, yeah. Nice. High balling. Yeah. That uh, Y back there is 15 miles an hour. Yeah. So when you come off into the yard or you come out of the yard, it's slow going. See, I don't know if I could ever be an engineer because my right foot is so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there's no way I could be an engineer. Like, oh my god. Good thing there's no gas pedal. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'd be losing it in the cab. Yeah, it's, uh... You definitely sit there sometimes and watch the paint dry. There's no doubt about yeah. that. I, I'd have to be an engineer for a passenger... Oh, you'd be flying in those things, man. That's like a sports yeah, car. I'd be hauling ass for sure with those. Mm -hmm. Hauling. Got our, our air pressure on the rear, on the head end, main reservoir. We got 4,257 gallons of fuel on this unit. Uh, remind me to keep an eye on that, because by the time we get to the cone pass, it should be about 1,000 gallons less. Wow. Compared to real life. <sighs> let's throttle up. And let's check on the rear of our train. Where are we at? Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. There's so many homeless people on the left side of this last time I came through here in real life. Oh, yeah, they're everywhere now. Ooh, it was bad. Yeah, the other day I was, uh, actually Monday, I was, yesterday, I was doing my Walmart pickup, and they started behind the Walmart now with a little tent city going. Mm. Let alone down by Hardgrave. They have a whole street where there's nothing on the street next to the freeway, and it's it's huge. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> we got the cab signals on. These don't work in real life. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so it'll tell you, like, the upcoming. It's what they use, like, for... Like the Metra passenger trains back east and uh, stuff like that, like in Chicago. Yeah, you would need it at that speed. Mm hmm. Trying to see what's going on. It's cool, the mountains in the background. Uh -huh. Looks real. The clouds actually look really good, so I don't know what's going on with the rest of the game. Alright, let's see... Where are we at? Oh, we're almost... We're almost there. I almost start to pick you. <laughs> Got a duper, man. 
Dinner and Doopers. <laughs> Doop doopers. Doopity doop. At least there has P doopers. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I just put You're this. You're not even around the freaking curve. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I just put this UP unit on the head and just do something different because I always run the older stuff. Gotta change it up. Now, can you move around inside the cab, or are you stuck in the seat? Uh, I can move around, being the conductor. I mean, if the engineer needed to go to the bathroom or something, he'd get out of the seat and I'd just get in it. No, 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 I meant in the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I can go up, down, side to side. I can peek over no. at Kyle over the control stand. Oh, so you could, like, walk around to Kyle? Yeah, I think I can. Once I, uh, get going, I'll try to do that. Mm. <clears throat> Alright, we'll give it a little, a little longer, then I'll check again. Or maybe I could see back. Yeah, I can see back. Never mind. Safety first with Kyle. Got yeah. the best on. <laughs> yeah. He's got the orange vest on, which, uh, UP don't do that. Oh, they have the bright yellow ones? Yep. We got a red signal on the siding looking back, but it's more of a, like a orangey glow. Oh, yeah. Huh. I'll let that duper get off the bridge, and then we'll highball. Hammer down. Oh, that's cool. They even have a wiper on the back window, too. That's cool. Yeah, and, uh, you can turn that stuff on. and Pretty much everything on the controls is interactive besides what actually stops and starts the train. Oh, cool. All right, we're off the bridge, so we're good for 30 through here. From what I remember. These things, dude. <laughs> these original SD70s like this. They are so bad these days. <laughs> oh. It sounds like you're riding in like a can of bolts just shaking around. <laughs> Can't even hear yourself think. Well, when I see them uh, go by when I'm at work on the main line, man, they are, they look like they've been through wars. <laughs> yeah, their paint jobs are all messed up. Yep. It looks like most of them have caught fire, and they just, they don't even care UP, they just like paint primer now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't even care. Money for paint? <laughs> <laughs> Is this Maybe. a joke? Uh. So in a minute here, I'm going to turn auto, the dispatcher, back on because I had to manually route us out of the yard for some reason. So we'll turn him on and see what happens. If he starts acting up, I'll just disable him. He's a mm. UP dispatcher, so can't expect much. Well, seeing how he went from uh, driving the school bus into the Simpsons to uh, doing trains. Yeah. It's not a good uh, sign. No. Oh, yeah. We're going to do pretty good up this hill. Especially you got greens, man. Last time you were sitting on reds forever. Oh. Got to slow down, though, because we're approaching a dip. We pick up quite a bit of speed. Let's see, which one's the bell? Or are you why at is, bell? Why is your two displays in front of you have the same information? Yeah, I think it's just part of the game. I think you can go in there and uh, change it if you want. Oh, okay. Where the hell is my bell? Is there not a bell button in this one? Good lord. I hear there it is. 
I got the weak new age bell. So back here we went over the Santa Fe's Pasadena sub in real life and you come through a dip. There's a massive homeless camp on the left. You can't see it right now. So they probably got evicted. But in real life. Some tumbleweeds on the tracks. Oh, they even got the greaser that's there in real life. That's cool. <laughs> One time this ditch got flooded. And they didn't do anything about it. We just went through it. It was cool. They didn't do anything about it for like months. Reesers like recent shit under the water. <laughs> yeah. Kills the uh, AIDS, you know. Mm. Hey, we got DPU no calm. Sweet. Oh, we got it back. <clears throat> it's funny how you forget all this stuff and then you, like, come away. You've gone a million times before and then you just remember all of it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Hey, this one's got an alerter button. How about that? Those older units I was using didn't have an alerter button. They didn't alert. That was funny. Yeah. Rich Boogie! See, is our sand still on? I don't think so. Let's turn the sand on. There we go. We want to do max speed up the grade. Let's see here. Let's engage auto on all routes. There we go. Yeah, so typically, like these screens, like one would be like your DPU, and the other would be your normal screen that we're looking at, from what I remember. Oh. But today we're just uh, looking at the same thing. Hey, check that out. This unit's got 168,493 miles. Wow. That's funny. Is this a real unit number? Yeah, this should be a real unit. 8374. Toyota truck actually has more miles than this. <laughs> 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 I'm up to like 200,000 and like two, 220, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, that little truck. Still working good, huh? Oh, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still twerking good. Yeah, it's a Toyota. Yeah. And it's a 96, too. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's see what our buddy Otto's doing. Should be lined up all the way. So. Greaser. Still on the green. Um, let's see, shift F1, nope, uh, control F1, nope, that ain't it, it control F2, I don't see any other trains, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in this menu, you'll see it in a sec, I'm gonna spawn some stuff, oh, okay, 
Span. Really wasn't uncommon to uh, not come across anything against you coming up the UP's Mojave sub. Over to the right some ways is the Santa Fe, and that's what we mainly used, it seemed like. <clears throat> Let's get a good view outside of the cab. Left out the bridge here, that kind of sucks. Aww. It's a really neat bridge here where you go over the uh, 210 and then there's the big wash. I went over this bridge one time and it was pouring rain and there was a huge flash flood. It was insane. Thirty acceleration, so we need to back off the throttle a bit. Once we're gonna speed going uphill. Yep, they got the detector right here in real life. Man, Kyle's on his game today. He's looking straight ahead. I can't believe it. Yeah. You know what it is? He got in trouble last time for not calling out signals, so yeah. now he's all up on it. Yep. But he didn't know I'm a tattletale. Oh, uh, is that what it is, dude? Yeah. I'm surprised, like, the UP doesn't have, like, spy cameras in their engines. Oh, they do. Fine. There's a camera up above the cab right here facing in. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Back to full throttle. Brrr. I mean, if you look at these cabs, man, they have a lot of detail. And I'm pretty sure all these buttons are interactive. That's cool. They got the blue card. Got all the tags for it. If you need it, they did a really good job. Let's look at the dispatcher screen. So, let's see here. spawn a train again. Alright, cool. Let's test Otto and see how he routes us now that there's going to be a train coming against us. Will the alerter sound? Yep, there it goes. Nice. Noise. So let's go back. Yep, we got. He's being routed out of the siding. 
at Highland. got a detector. Oh my god, what'd you do? I don't know. Hot box at axle 6, 12, 18, 30, and 420. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem. <laughs> right there. Your dog jumped your train. 420. Kyle, what'd you do? Kyle's not even phased. Set some air. What are we in run five? It's important to know when you start again. That was a six pound set. You can see we got 84 on the monitor. Set some more right now. Go to a roughly a 10 pound set. All right, well, I guess we gotta go find what the heck's going down. We're throttling off. Everything's set. Let's go figure out what's up. Troll. Hot box axle six. So is that on our unit? <laughs> wow. Just go down the first car. You know how many times I got a detector at that detector in real life? And here I am again. Oh, wow. Yeah. seen any defects on these things. Click the coupler. Hmm. Handbrake, handbrake. I don't know what she's talking about. you see a defect in the video game or it just tells you when you click on it uh if it's like a hot box so a hot wheel hot journal um you won't see it but if you break the train in half you'll see it because the coupler is all messed up and you gotta repair the coupler and all sorts of stuff so that part of it's cool Axle 420. I bet you that's at the very rear, so let's cheat here. Alright, let's try some of these cars. Potash! Everything looks fine. I don't know what she's talking about. Woman's. 
Yeah, whatever. I'm going back in the cab. We hit the next detector and it trips again. Then I'll jump out one. Yeah. All right. So, so we're all back up. The thing that sucks about these newer units is they got the uh, fuel saver features on them, so they shut down after like 10 minutes of idling. Yeah, they do that with the big rigs, and then so anytime I would rent one back in my old company, I'd have the guy go in with the laptop you can plug into the dash, mm -hmm. and I would say, get rid of the governor and get rid of the idle stop. Yep. That way I could go at any speed, and then the idle wouldn't shut down. Alright, now we're going to basically use the independent as a clutch to get going again. You want to look at the ground right next to the cab for the smallest movement. Our rear end's moving already, so the duper's pushing up against the train. Nice. Because we were stretched out. You know, that idle thing might be a California law, because that's they put them on the big rigs for, because of the California. Yeah, it could so be. I wonder if they do that with the trains. That's crazy. <clears throat> if, if that's Well, why. They, can't, they come that way now. Um, because it's not just in California. I mean, it might be because of restrictions. Alright. Yeah, but... they were the first to implement it, and then everybody had to jump on board because everybody bunched e bags. <laughs> we're moving. Get out, push. <laughs> yeah. So these tractive effort right here, this is a good indication of when to throttle up. You'll see it climb up. When it settles back down, it kind of levels out. It's going back down at the moment. Once that levels out, then that's when you can grab another notch without ripping this thing in half. <clears throat> basically just showing how much power is coming out and you don't want to keep throttling up as the power is increasing the tractive effort because then you'll surely break it in half Back to full throttle. Yeah, we've already used 50 gallons of fuel. <laughs> Imagine paying that kind of diesel of five dollars a gallon. <laughs> See what auto's up to. Coming up here. Oh, he's already almost down the canyon. I wonder what he's gonna do. He doesn't have him lined anywhere, or me lined anywhere, so there's no plan. Huh! Just like the actual Union Pacific dispatchers.
train is what they would call five by one. Five on the head and one on the rear. Typically they're like three by two or four by two, but figured one would do it. Auto, what are we doing? I guess I'll just pay attention to the signals. Yeah, man, if you ever pick up this game, we could do some awesome multiplayer on this thing. It'd basically be like Railroads Online, but uh, modern. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's take a gander. Well, all the units on the head end are running, so that's good. You weren't on uh, 10 minutes ago. Trip to detector. This was a hot box, so one of these journals was overheating. So I guess I'll just inspect the train while I'm down here. Typically, you'd see smoke or something kind of glowing orange. But I don't see nothing. Twenty two, I thought we would have been better than twenty two for sure. This thing's powered up. What's the building up ahead? Oh, let me look. Oh, that's the uh, cargo grain elevator off the Santa Fe to the right. And then you got the uh, the warehouses to the left. There's so many warehouses there now. If you guys got any railroad questions, throw them in the chat. Much appreciated. Any likes or subscribes? Been doing uh, Transport Fever 2. Gonna start doing Derail Valley. Been testing out the new Trains Railroad Simulator 2022, so go check that video out if you haven't seen it. <clears throat> Planning on doing a lot of stiff. And then when Railroads Online comes out, their new update, me and uh, Old Golden Wonder will start playing that again. I like that one. Yeah, it's a good one. You know what I wish they would have put in that is um, being able to have like an NPC fireman that keeps you your your little uh, throwing wood in your uh, boiler. That'd be nice. Yeah, that would be really nice. That would be great. Yeah. That would be super. Just something simple like that, you know, because it's it is tough to balance all of it. Yeah. Especially by yourself. Yeah, if you had a fireman, that would have been just be so much easier. Yeah. All right, so he's in Canyon Siding. We're on a green. 
Does he stop him there and let us go, or do we get stopped at Dyke? I wish this uh, sunshade could fold up so you actually see what's up. This hill is the most painful hill in the world in the middle of the night. Oh, just grinding at like 10 miles an hour, you can't see anything. That's funny. It's amazing. Well, it might be a good idea if we uh, turn our radio to the right channel. You can interact with the radio in the cab to change channels and dial the dispatcher and all that stuff. Derpity derp. Alright. Well, we're lined up, so I guess he's stopping. Be nice no of this. Reds today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no red signals. Do you know how to, uh, does anybody know how to do the height maps? I've seen you can like import height maps into games to make, you know, your own maps. Like a Transport Fever 2, there's a height map option. I thought that would be interesting to use to make some really realistic maps. But I'm not sure how to do any of that. Max 3.4% grade. Yeah, I thought so. Uh oh. Yep, that gets annoying. see where we could spawn a train at. F2, nope. Got track bulletins, that's pretty cool. Nope, I got it. I got this. Ainsel, where is Ainsel? Hey, the Santa Fe's only double main track. That's funny. They got the Santa Fe double main track, which is triple now, but yet they have the updated to Hatchby Loop where it's double track. Huh. Huh.
I was trying to think of a way where I could go into this game's coding and like import better graphics. <laughs> I feel like if I could do that, man, I'd make the gameplay so much better. Make your boy Kyle a uh, good looking warmer. <laughs> No, I would just make him a Supreme Kyle. <laughs> a Supreme Kyle. Yeah. So, monster hat that's flat, yeah. turned sideways, or like off on an angle. Uh-huh. Uh, his vest, I would stitch a monster logo into his reflective vest. You know? Yeah, he'd have to have a tattoo, like, visible. Yeah. 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 We got Monster a whistle board. So, let's get the bell going. If it will go. Nope. This bell's really finicky. Tell you what, the bell... And the horn sounds just like a real bell and horn in the SD70 ACE. That is wow. for sure. Let me turn off the bell. Come on. There it goes. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, good lord. Now what? <laughs> they making you stop? Otto the idiot lined a train right into me. We're both on single track with nothing with no sidings in between us. Hell yeah, full throttle. Full throttle. Uh, I guess yep. it's not configured with this route yet. <laughs> yeah, I finally see it. <laughs> so, what happens with that in real life? Do they make a train back up? Yeah, so like I would probably have to back down into dike siding. Which, which is what we just passed, and then, yeah, you let the other go through. So this is what I'm going to do, because I do not want to deal with this right now. Is that the 58 right there we're going to go under? This is the uh, 15. Then you have the 215 intersection up there. Oh, okay, I know where you're at now. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking you were way past Barstow. Yeah. Yeah, I lost my mind there for a second. I know exactly where you're at right now. Okay. So good, brother. Let's go fly now, through the air. I uh, was just going to say, you can fly up and then go delete that train. That's what I'm going to try to do, because I really don't want to have to deal yeah. with this. The, the, the video is actually going to start getting better, so hopefully everybody who's watching is going to stay here, because yeah, climbing this hill is going to be beauty. Beaut. Yeah, if you could put some great scenery and graphics into this game, it would this game would dominate everyone else. It's got everything you want in a train simulator. Bye. <laughs> get out of here. All right, let's get back in the cab before we uh That's cool because like I can't count the number of times I've you know, drove a truck up the 15 there. Yeah. And I don't get to see all this, like what we're about to get into. You yeah. Know, that's cool. Yeah. You'll get to see the route for what it is. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have to remind me to show you where the big pot plantation is up here in about another <laughs> four miles <laughs> or so. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. There was so many tweakers hanging out of this place, like in their own trailers and one one chick even started restoring a house that only had uh, Swiss cheese walls that was pretty cool oh 
wow. She was building it up, even though there was only the framing left. A lot of fires through here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do they have the cutoff? They don't have the cutoff. Let's go back to flying really quick. Let me, let me hit the alerter. I don't want to... Yeah, I'm not trying to go into an emergency on the hill. Let's go back to flying. Yeah, they don't have the, uh, the cutoff. There's a track that connects from the UP to the BNSF right here, right before their crossovers. That's lame. I think it's called the Linwood Cutoff. You gotta have that in the game, like, come on now. There is a <coughs> nudist colony over here. It's like a, a huge trailer park community, but they're all, you know, kind of weird. And they have a giant heart. Like this huge, like, restaurant sign that they light up when they're doing their thing. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh. So as you're going by with the train, can you, like, see anything? No, it, it's a little bit too far away. Um. But, yeah, it's it's an interesting place. <laughs> There's so many weird places like that up against the railroad, I don't understand. Yeah, my last company, the old secretary, she was a nudist, and I was like, yeah, I wouldn't want to be in that nudist colony. <laughs> My dad said he came through here one time and they all walked out and started waving at him. <laughs> but, oh. but naked. <laughs> Especially your dad. I can imagine him. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's just like, ugh, and he put his head down <laughs> and his hand yeah. over his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's such like a grizzly bear. Like an old grizzly bear. Yeah. Arr, I'm surprised he didn't like flip him off or something. <laughs> Well, good news is, is that our EOT is still moving, so the whole train's still here. He's chugging his way up the hill. Let's try to keep up with it. Yeah, we're at running, running speed. One thing I will say is the sounds, the sounds are really good of the uh, locomotives, but they're a little quiet. <clears throat> hey Kyle, how's it going bud? Sorry I had to slap you around the other way to get you to do your job, but I'm glad you're focusing today bud. All right, we'll check back in later. Yeah, last time he was like staring at you. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you see the part of that video where I honked the horn and the character just seemed to glitch out so it looked like I waked him up. I'm like, "Oh, you're awake now." <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. I think Kyle's chewing some Copenhagen there. Yeah. It's probably monster flavored. Yeah, mo monster flavored Copenhagen. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> no, he probably does the little pouches. Yeah, the little mint ones. Yeah. Yeah. The little mint pouches. That, that'd be a true Kyle right there. 
That's the Kyle I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll get on this side over here. We'll get kind of close to Kyle. Hey, man. It's a nice desk you got caught there. Oh, wow. The, the numbers on his uh, little monitor are actually working. Oh, wow. That, that's, that's rare on the UP. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not, like, on Instagram on his phone or something, you know? Yeah. He's on TikTok. It, it, it's you where know? we can't see it. It's underneath the desk. He's Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to look I'm, like, you know? Yeah. Since he got in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Speed radar. 21 miles per hour. Then you got a distance counter. But this, in real life, never works. So that's impressive. cool about the UP's Mojave sub right here is that you're elevated slightly over the Santa Fe and kind of the rest of the canyon so you got a lot more of a view of the mountains oh, and the cool. uh, wash and just the area <clears throat> if I had it my way we would have gone up the UP's Mojave sub every time typically you go up the Santa Fe nine times out of ten why I don't know Santa Fe just must because, hate themselves. You know why? Because that way UP doesn't have to do much maintenance on their track. Yeah, I, just, I don't I know. bet you. On every, I shouldn't say every, on some units that I got that didn't have air conditioning, I would marker UPAC and then I'd have an arrow pointing up to the window <laughs> as it was open. <sighs> Uh, we lost the DPU, no com. That's funny how it does that. And we got it back. That's weird. That happens a lot. So we're coming up on the uh, pot farm slash tweaker hideout. <laughs> This area to the left of the track, so right up against the hill, there's a lot of water that runs off of it, so there's sections that are like jungle, like super thick vegetation certain times of year. It's really cool. Super cool. You know, like right here, you really can't even see the Santa Fe because it's so treed in. Oh, wow. Coming up on our ride as we make this nice, smooth right hand curve is where you'll find San Bernardino's finest pot growers, along with whatever else they do. They actually got busted right before I left. I can't remember. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, they had all these big walls put up, and then there's lights inside the walls <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they were like right as we go in between these two little hills right here. 
then they had a junkyard out to the left of just all their wasted stuff. Uh, let's see what Otto the Dummy's doing. Do we have any trains above Highland? No, we don't. It's probably a good thing. We have one train. Oh, there's actually two trains. Uh oh. What are you doing, Otto? I might have to line us in the canyon or something. This guy, man. Apparently they don't drug test auto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hear ya, I hear ya. So we'll go a little farther and then I might have to disengage auto and route some of these trains so that we can get through. Because hmm. apparently he can't figure it out today. Yeah, so this section of the route's actually pretty cool. From here all the way to the top of the Cone Pass really is the coolest part. You got a pretty good view as you're looking over everything. And then we start kind of heading up the sides of some cliffs and stuff. Now in this game, do they have the 15 freeway? I don't know. We're going to see here pretty shortly. Yeah. We're going to make this right-hander kind of zigzag straight for a bit and then we'll see if it's on the side of the mountain up there. Let's keep an eye on Otto. Okay, so he's lined out of Highland already. So we're going to have to line ourselves in the canyon if we want to uh, not get clogged up with him. Greaser! Alright, so let's go to F3. <clears throat> Whistleboard. Why the hell is there a whistle out in the middle of nowhere? There's a road right here. Oh. Around the bend. Goes up to uh, Mount Baldy. Oh, I've been up there. Come on. Ah, stupid Bell. I hate you, Bell. Turn off. Turn off. That's funny because. When you started blowing the horn, you know, my video is like five seconds behind. Yeah. I couldn't see the road when I was, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that road can sneak up on you if you're not paying attention in real life. So it looks like they got the 15 freeway up there on the side of the hill. Let's go to the dispatcher screen. 
Oh yeah, you can see it now, yeah. Yeah, you're coming up on the truck scales. to have a stop in Beedlin and because it's with a P when I was there I used to call it Puffeedlin. Puffeedlin? It used, used to piss the lady off. It was funny. That's great. Let's go back this way. Back to neutral. Escape. So there's a train in Highland Siding. I need to delete that. That thing just spawned in. Good riddance. On the side of the cliff right here. This is a pretty cool part. Coming around this right. thing. You can see it really well up here. Control F2. Of course, the alerter comes on. Thanks for that. Uh, what's that train up there? F3. UP 8020, okay, escape. UP 8020, where you at? This is a list of all the trains. Let's delete that train. Let's go back to the dispatch screen, okay. What train is this? WCRV29. Okay, so we're going to give it back to Otto and see if he can sort this thing out. <clears throat> Otto. A lot of nice trees here in the spring and the summer down in this wash when they bloom. Mm. Looks real nice. <laughs> this will give you a good, uh, Good sense of time on how long it takes to get up the hill. That's if you don't have to stop. <laughs> and typically we're not going this fast, so. Wow. One time I did eight miles an hour all the way up. Oh, God. <laughs> it was fun. Well, in a big rig going up the hill, you, the, the, the um, way station is at the bottom. So if you didn't have to go into the coops, the chicken coops, then, <laughs> and you had a decent run going up, you'd hit um, probably about 30, 35 miles an hour going up the hill. Okay. Um, loaded. Um, if you were super loaded and like at weight, you're looking at like 25. And if you had a Tijuana shit box, then you're doubling like 20. <laughs> you know, 15. Yeah. All right, what are we doing, Otto? Let's let's get some of these trains moving, boy.
I must say though the the realism of this route, like the track and how long it is and everything, like it's pretty much exact. Wow. Yeah, usually in games they don't do that. Yeah. I'm not sure how they do it. They must use like a height map like I was talking about earlier and just put it on a on a map or a world that's got plenty of room for it. What's cool about this game is that there's route DLC and all the West Coast route DLC all connects to each other. So Nice. The, yeah, so the game comes with uh, Needles to Barstow, which includes Yermo to Daggett on the UP side. Then it has the BNSF Mojave sub, which goes from Barstow to Mojave. And then up over to Hatchby down the Bakersfield, and then you can come all the way down to Highland siding, which we're coming up on on the UP. I bought this Cajon Pass DLC, which then added on the Cajon Pass, West Colton, all that good stuff. And then you can buy the San Bernardino uh, sub DLC, which will then add on to where we started in this map, and you can go all the way into LA. So if you really wanted to, you could run a train from LA to Needles or Barstow. Wow. Coming up to the, uh, it's basically like a horseshoe curve. That's cool. Where it splits away from the freeway and we kind of do a big U. It's been a couple does, times. Is that alarm uh, every time Kyle runs out of a monster? And it's like a monster <laughs> dispenser. Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. So then what I do is I grab a monster and I just throw it right at his head. And then it resets <laughs> it. He resets Kyle. <laughs> yeah. You're good, Thanks, Kyle. Bro. <laughs> just spotting a bro, bro. Yeah. There was one time I had a coal train and we were here in Canyon Siding and the dispatcher told us we were going to be there a while. So I got out and I started hiking up in these mountains. <laughs> I was bored. I took my radio with me in case the engineer needed to get a hold of me. That's awesome, getting paid to go hiking around cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty neat. It was right after a rain, too, so. Had some water flowing. There's a good shot. Going around the little horseshoe curve. Looking back. Shut up, alerter. So all in all, it takes about an mm, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes to get up the hill. <sighs> you got the uh, McDonald's down that direction all the gas stations and we're coming up on the uh what's the highway that splits off there that goes to Phelan and Palmdale 118 I believe yeah yeah so we're coming up to the 118 and then the Mormon Rocks cause you could take it east and go up to backside of Big Bear with that 118 yeah, that's right. I've never been that way before. Oh, I have in the 
and the bobtail, the delivery truck. Uh -huh. And you go back these switchbacks. It's freaking awesome. Oh, cool. And I'd haul ass through there and scare the shit out of everybody on coming the opposite side. <laughs> but you know me, no matter what I'm driving, it's throttle down, baby. Throttle down. I don't care what size I got. <laughs> sure you'd be a good engineer you just have to you know respect the equipment hey the, <laughs> it's a 76 station and on this game it's a 67 <laughs> that's great yes the railroad in <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I know where you're at. Got main track two, which is now main track three over there. That's the killer. There's actually a shrine right over there in that curve for a crew that derailed there in the they didn't make it, unfortunately. The engineer was in the Marine Corps, so there's a bunch of Marine Corps memorabilia and flags over there. Oh, I think that's the train crash where uh, my brother-in-law's police department, one of the officers there had a wife who was a sheriff, uh -huh. and she was cordoning things off around the crash. And she ended up getting cancer from the crash. Yeah, from there's like a, the chemicals that were spilled. She died bunch. six months after that crash. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like massive cancer. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Yep, there's a huge hazmat leak and fumes and burning and yep. yeah, it was bad. I think that was '96 when that, that happened. About right. Yeah, I don't want to give out the names. I know the names, but, uh, yeah, literally within six months, she was dead. Oof, that's rough. And she had a brutal, like, the last three months was really bad. That's terrible. Yeah. Thanks, UP. It's actually the Santa Fe, believe it or not. Oh. Yeah. crossed over the 118 now we'll go through the Mormon rocks it's a pretty cool section of the railroad yeah see I'd be flying down the hill it's 45 for trucks so I'm doing like 65 empty <laughs> on my route coming back I look at the train <laughs> weaving it out of traffic <laughs> I wish that freaking visor wasn't in the way. I know, I can kind of like sit down low so that people can see. Um, yeah, if I could just rip that thing off, you know. Yeah. That'd be ideal. Well, now you know what engines to pick for lead engine. Yeah, I got a... One without a freaking visor. <laughs> I think they all got them, unfortunately. Man, six months, that's nuts. That'd be a crappy way to go. Yeah, they were good people, too. Yeah. I guess you just never know, man. Yeah. And, and she got it so bad that they couldn't keep a handle on it. Like, they caught it right away because she, uh, she was feeling bad from the get-go. 
Yeah. And they and they realized it was cancer, but there was such an onslaught, they couldn't keep up with it. That's the sad part. Yep. sit down so you guys can see a little better. I feel like I'm a low rider. <laughs> like I'm a kid <laughs> sitting in here. <laughs> That's the way I ride in the big rigs, man. Everybody thinks I'm a Mexican dude. <laughs> Got some maintenance away guys down there. Yeah, this is me driving a big rig, dude. This is so funny. They're down there working on the digital tracks, you know, mm -hmm. keeping the game running. Can you imagine if this game had like a, a wear on the tracks, like built in? Oh, wow. That would be something, huh? That's nuts. So it'd be like a cruise that would come out and work on it, have like form B's and stuff. I really want to know what the heck Auto is doing, man. These trains have been stopped here this whole time. Wow. And they're not moving north like they should be moving. It's 8493. Uh, let's go delete the 8493 and see what happens. SP 8493. Going underneath the 15. Dur -dur -dur. And to the left on the 15 is the southbound. Um, it's when you lose your brakes and it's the off ramp. Mm hmm. And yeah. You go into the hill. It's <laughs> a neat little area right here. This is where a lot of people come out, like off roading. I used to actually, me and my dad would go dirt bike riding. We'd park right here in between these tracks and take off into the hills to the left. That's cool. Pretty neat area. Yeah, this starts the northbound of the 15, starts the big portion of the hill where everybody's going slow. Yeah, it's a steep pitch there on the freeway. Yeah. See what's funny? They do have an RV back there. Yeah. Let's see what dispatcher dummies up to. I need to go into the code of this game and change his name to Dummy. His name's Otto, but he's a big dummy. Oh, they still got the tunnel here. Used to be a tunnel on the Santa Fe right here to the right. Light's funny. What'd they do? Knock down that whole hill? Yeah. Wow. Yep. 
Why the heck they do that? So you double tracked it. Oh, okay. So there's that third, what is now mainline number three is south of us a little bit. You can't see it from here. And then you have the north track, which is the one that's right next to us. So they added another one next to the north track. So, yeah. Because all southbound trains went down main track. What is now main track three, which is the really steep one. So, uh, they didn't want to risk it as much anymore. Now they got really strict requirements if they're going to send you down the steep track. Because they don't have to now. That there's three tracks. Okay, so that train finally left. Oh, jeez. Let's tone him up. We'll bug the dispatcher. <sighs> Let's see. 54. So we're going to punch him star 5 4. Press the signal just to see if this might kind of unlock him. So let's see, still kind of lined in, one train ahead of us. Derpity derp. We'll squat down a little bit so you guys can see around. guys got any railroad questions throw them in the chat It'd be much appreciated if you like the video helps the YouTubes promote this video just trying to grow just grinding up the comb pass So here's the dispatcher screen. I know I'm going kind of quick, but at the very bottom is where we're going to be. You see Highland. He's got us lined into there. So this is what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to line us straight. And then I'm going to reactivate okay give us a signal all the way to there we'll turn him back on because he is not figuring things out right now So 
not have a clear signal for me right now, huh? Well, I guess let's slow down just to be safe. Got a message up here in the corner. Does not have a clear signal for you right now, so let's throttle down just to be cautious. F3. Alright. Sometimes these things happen. We gotta slow down a bit just to be safe. Cab signal's on and it tells me that it's clear. <laughs> but we'll just be careful. We got the silver wood cutoff right here coming up track that connects from the UP Mojave sub to BNSF. A lot of times they kick us off the BNSF onto the Mojave sub if you're southbound. Clear! So the reason why I gave us that message is because since I turned on the auto dispatcher it's basically acting like if a new dispatcher came on they're just warning you. So here's a silverwood cutoff. When I was on the Union Pacific, I never went straight. I always went to the right. Because if you stay on the UP, it goes all the way to Palmdale, which is not in my service unit at the time. Those are for the Bakersfield crews. Alright, we're back to full throttle. It's boogie. back down. It's a pretty good shot looking back. You can see the rear end of our train. Yeah, we only burn like 300 gallons. Real life, you burn about a thousand gallons getting up the Cohen Pass. Looks like we're good for 40 through here. Now the the grade really uh, eases up. I, I missed it. Green signal. So 
So now we are on territory I do not know by heart because I've never been this way before. Looks like we got plus 11 on the accelerometer, so we're going to start throttling off. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's pretty much level right here. Mm. Highland siding. Down below us is the Venus F. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to run this train at speed, but I don't know the route, so this might get a little hairy. Might put it on the ground, we'll see. Looks like it's going how it should. I don't know why he's still way back here, but he is. Stopped for lunch. Yeah, apparently. Green. Mile post 462. In case you're wondering what those numbers are for. We got it at almost track speed. 39. We're good for 40. Let's see this number on this train again. The UP 7688. Alright. Triple F2, UP7688. Where are you at? Stopped. Why are you stopped? You have a signal. <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I have to delete this train too. Holy moly. I think I am, because it just doesn't want to go. Well, think about it. If it's a UP unit, it can't go. Yeah. It's broken. It doesn't, uh... It doesn't have the ability, you know? Yeah. Wow, we're all the way down in run one right now. Oh, we got a rock slide. Good thing they got the 50-year-old dozer on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
always push the wrong button. Oh well, it's got a backup. Whistleboard coming up. All right. Whistle. Because there's a slight uphill here. That's why we got bogged down. good for 50. It says we're good for 60. Ah. This is a manifest train, which they're only good for 50. So. Hey, my dad. Burp -a -burp. All right, let's see what we're doing. Come on, auto. Let's get with it. I tell you, big dum dum. There <laughs> we go, brother. Time to shake and bake. Siding, we're going into the hole. That's what they call it when you have to stop in the siding. I'm gonna go into the hole, man. going through a dip on a flasher so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna speed up we're gonna set some air we're gonna drag it through this dip stretch it out oh we got six people watching yeah crazy So what we're doing, what I'm doing right now is we're set some air, got a light set, and now I'm going to speed up, because when you go downhill the train bunches up, and we want to keep it stretched out. So we did a light brake application, air brakes, automatic brake, whatever you want to call it, the brakes on the rail cars. Now we're gonna drag it down into this dip, and then as we come up the other side, I'll knock off the brakes to keep it stretched out from bogging down too much. This is how you control the slack.
So we just hit a detector. If you weren't here earlier earlier in the video, we tripped the last detector. So we'll see how it goes this time. Now the head end of the train, we're going up the other side of the dip, so now we're going upper grade. Run eight, because we got a six pound set on. We got we tripped the detector again. Stop <laughs> your train, stop your train. So we're going down another dip. So we'll uh, probably just leave this set on, drag it down, then when we get to the other side, I'll release it. Axle 6, 12, 18, 30, and 420. So that would be the first three units. The rear axles on all three units. That makes no sense. You know what it is, is the computer stuck on 420. Yeah. yeah. I think we know why. Auto and the in those detections are all 420 right now. Yeah. So I just released the brakes because it's getting pretty bogged down. Now we're throttling off a bit. Yeah, conductor Kyle over there. That's these are lucky charm, to say the least. Yeah. The silent conductor Kyle. I love it. <laughs> it's my boy right there. Doesn't say yeah. a word. Drives his F-150. It's got like a six-inch lift, most likely. A minimum. Yeah, minimum. Six yeah. inch. Yeah. With like a four inch body lift. <laughs> when you get those Santa Ana winds out there in California, he goes flying in his truck. Yeah, he's, he's turtling. Yeah. <laughs> the bad kind of turtling. Yeah. We call his truck the, uh, the parachute. <laughs> used to work in an Amazon warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the usual. Uh, yeah. Listens to rap. <laughs> Got rap blaring. Yeah. Eminem's number one fan. Yeah. Rap blaring. All right, next signal will be going to a siding. So I'm going to try is uh, we're going to come to the siding hard and fast. We'll do what we did back there. You set the airs are coming into the siding and then you drag it in. And we should be able to come in pretty fast and stop on a dime. We'll see. Uh, what's the speed you can go through these switches with? Well, on the UP, they're all kind of rated differently, so you need to know them by heart. But ah. we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> so I'm going to... So we could be on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <is what you're laughs> Potentially. Uh, 
when the engine becomes a massive paperweight. Yeah. I'm going to shoot for 45. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> I feel like that's a good speed. Go, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. You know, some are like 50, some are like 30. We'll go for 45, you know? What the difference, kinda. Yeah. Let's see what a Nimrod is doing. Oh, sorry, I meant auto. <laughs> oh, he's got us lined up. How about that? We're not going into the siding. Oh, wow. Dang it, I had to pee. <laughs> <laughs> like a real engineer, I needed to pee. Gatorade bottle. Yeah. I'm going to blow the... I'm going to hit the alerter. I'll just mess with the throttle, and then I'm going to take a leak, and I'll be right back. And we'll see where we're going. If we're still on the rails or not. All right, I'll be right back. I told Kyle to hit the alerter while I was going pee. Dang that it. You kidding me? He wasn't paying attention. He was on TikTok or <laughs> something. Oh, peaches. Um, dispatcher. <laughs> All right, let's see here. We're going to do this the easy way, folks. Oh, look at that. We're smoking. <laughs> awesome. We're overheating the brakes a bit. Whoops. So do they, do the brakes get put on that quick if you don't hit the button? Yeah. In real life? Wow. Yeah. Holy Mary. Now oh, that's a real UP site right there. Yeah, that's her boy. Alright, Otto. You're being an idiot. Air brake system recharged. I always hit the wrong button. I love it. It's so great. I need to take over the dispatch now. Auto the dummy. All right, let's try this again, auto. Let's get 
back up to speed. Derp to derp. Are you still smoking? A little bit. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, let's get after this, huh? Okay, what are we doing, Otto? I don't understand what he's doing. Everything is holding and stopped. Why is that? They know you're the engineer. Freaking out. We can't move while he's uh yeah, while he's doing his control. thing. This guy's just slamming brakes on just for having fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Have to smack him around again after this trip, you know. You know, you know the yellow button, and you know when it starts making that really annoying high-pitched noise. No, no, no. See, what Kyle was doing was he was getting you back for when you got him in trouble. Oh. Uh, That's what it is. I see how it is, Kyle. Yeah. We got a green signal. Derp to derp. Looks like we got another dip coming up, so I'll probably have to set some err. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll have to set some err uh, for sure. Light set, coming your way. This is back what engineers used to do before they just relied on the dynamic brakes all the time. Climbing up the other side. It's weird, you know, they, I think they kept out a key thing of the graphics and that's all the uh, mesh labs out here in the Feeland area. I don't see any. Why are 
aren't any of these trains moving? That's what I want to know. Knocking off the air. Another detector. I'm sure we'll fail it. <laughs> 420, 420. Axel, 4, 2, 0. Calm it down, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Going into dynamics. Detector, mile post, 4, 4. We're only good for 50. It's going in between 50 and 51, so we're good. Monster for the boy. Brother. We got no defects now. Hmm. Uh, wow, well, they fixed themselves. I guess no, you know what it is? Wait, when Kyle didn't hit the button and everything slammed onto the emergency brake, it fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kyle, you're the man. So, we're going down a downhill. I'm just going to use dynamics this time.
Alright, what is going on up in here? all the way through I guess auto doesn't want to work today real quick that one train just flat out disappeared I don't know what's up with that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah we'll stop in Dennis siding Denise Dennis whatever you call it depends if you're French or not <laughs> Going to stop at Denise. Oh, oh, oh. We're moving. We are moving. Clear signal. We need to put us back in some more dynamics. Notch eight and eight. What's up? Spooking your boy Kyle. Yeah. It's okay, Kyle. We're going the speed limit. Derpity, derp, derp. Clear. Shh, be quiet. Alert or just be quiet.
Match eight and eight. Are you going to be on the pool or are you going to be on a local when you return? There's a guy in the chat, Gold Wonder. He's a BNSF conductor. Nice. He runs down to Phoenix. At least that's what he said last time. Oh, we need more dinos. Whoopsie. Guess that's why they don't let you look at your phone while you run. Come on. <laughs> I hated driving through Phoenix, man. No matter what time of the day, Phoenix is wadded up with traffic. Don't matter. <laughs> I could blast through there at 2 in the morning, and I'm brake checking because there's traffic. Like, I'm, I'm on the brake because there's traffic. 2 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Like, what is going on? So there's open seniority districts. Is that a new thing, Nate? Or is that something that the BNSF has done for a while? Typically, uh, for the UP, you have to seniority swap with somebody. You can't just enter another service unit or district. So do they allow you to move around? Yeah, the summer out there must not be very fun. <laughs> Working a local in the summer out there would be terrible. Well, you could get weight loss from all the sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lean, mean machine during the summer. So are you built in? Did you hire out for the Santa Fe to be able to do that? Like a grandfather rule? See, that's one thing. The UP straight up took over the SP, so they uh, show no mercy. Whereas with you guys, you were two big railroads that literally came together. Running up the needles. Yeah. Not a whole lot out there. I'm sure if you ran east, though, you got the Kingman and Sligman and all that, that'd be pretty country. We got a flasher. <laughs> what is up with all these trains just sitting around? This is weird. They're just broken down UP trains. Yeah, their power's all messed up. They're you're, just... you're gonna go buy them and they're gonna be on fire. <laughs> no 
Oh wow, so conductors can move around on the BNSF, right on. There's always like a negative stipulation to becoming an engineer, it seems like, these days. So if you're an engineer, you're stuck. That's funny. Wherever you became an engineer. F2. See, all these trains are holding, like, across the whole map. I don't understand. Does auto have a settings? Or is it automatic? It's pretty much automatic. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. I wonder if it's because I got this Cajon Pass TLC mod, if it's messing it up a little bit. Typically, you got stuff running on its own, like all over the place. Yeah. And, and the dispatcher's doing his thing, you know? Like they should. That's what happened with the uh, Tehachapi one. Yeah. Got an approach. Hmm. I guess we gotta really think about slowing down then. I shouldn't be doing more than, uh,. 30 miles an hour past that signal, so we just broke a rule. <laughs> nice. That's how we do it around here, fellas. Chicago guys that come down the summer. Wow, all the way to Arizona? Jeez. Oh, that's got a line. And we got a red signal all the way right there to the right. I'm going to ease up on the dynamics. Uh, UP out of Tucson. Uh, I honestly don't know much about it. It's probably messed up, just like everywhere on the Union Pacific Railroad. I don't think it really matters where you go at this point. Tucson... Um, I don't think there's too much road stuff that comes out of there anymore. I think it's, uh, probably locals yard jobs. We do get a, t we used to get a Tucson that came through Yuma, and then we'd take that down the West Colton, I believe. But the, the UP's changed everything so much in the last three years, even since I've been there. It's only been a couple of years since I left, and uh, they changed trains and origins of trains and all that, like, so much. It's ridiculous. So this is a intermediate signal, I'm pretty sure, which means we can go past it even if it's red. just have to be a restricted speed, which is... Do not exceed 20 miles an hour. Be able to stop in half the distance of your range of vision. Okay, that train finally moved. Holy cow. Yeah, when you're getting up to it, it'll, it'll finally move. <laughs> yeah, it must be. It's like the spacing, like it's got some sort of spacing feature. I don't understand, man. 
My advice to you, Nate, is do not work for the UP anywhere, ever. starting to pick up again. So the reason why this signal's red is because there's something occupying the block on the other side of the signal. I don't know what. Sometimes it could be someone opened a switch, or there's a train, or something going on. I do see a train up there, but I don't know if that's in the... Uh, I think there's a rock quarry that might be in there. Let's go fly over there real quick and check it out. This game's being kind of finicky today so far. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we got the rock train in the siding. What is going on here? <laughs> Let's just delete that. <laughs> uh, Auto lined his mainline train into the rock quarry, so it got stuck in there. And it was hanging out onto the main line, which is why. I had a red signal. Your boy Otto. Yep. Winslow and Needles. Yeah, that's a pretty good run, Nate. It looks like it. Just driving through there. Was that the 40, Martin? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice ride. Yeah, Tucson, it's, you know, it's southern Arizona, man, so it's like dry desert. Nothing, nothing like going up through Flagstaff and all that. Yeah, I had a lot of stops up in northern Arizona, my last job. It was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, it's pretty country up there. Yeah. Payson, Sholo, really nice. So we are at restricted speed until the next signal. derp de derp <laughs> Actually, I also did uh, Flagstaff and Page, and Page, Arizona, when I was there um, years back, you know, wasn't that big, and they blew up. Yeah. It, it got, it started to get big, so that was crazy. I was actually looking for... Uh houses out that way or at least a property to build a house on but really hard to get a well out there for some reason so I was like nah you have to truck in all your water
Alright, so I think we have a switch open up there, so let's go inspect. My, my stop there in Page, Arizona, the woman I had to deal with looked like she could be the sister of um, Miley Cyrus. Oh. Yeah. No thanks. Uh, imagine Miley Cyrus, but very um, Christian. Well, that's what that, that's what that she was like. Way better than Miley Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, a lot better. She was super nice. It was great. It was easy. Get in and out. Deal with her. It was really nice. Yeah. Three, one, point one. Dirt, 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 dirt. UP detector. UP detector, your uh, 420's on fire. <laughs> so there's a mainline switch that was open there because auto routed that train into the rock quarry when it's not supposed to go into the rock quarry. Sir. Took the time I got a. Uh, I had a coal train coming down from Yermo. Most of the time, the coal trains take a right there at that Y in Colton when they go down the Long Beach. However, we had a Yuma coal train. It goes to our power plant in Arizona. The dispatcher didn't know that. So I almost didn't say anything so that he could have taken it to Long Beach by mistake. But I figured, you know what? Might as well. Yeah, we got a hot journal axle detector twice so far today for 420 of all things. Yep. <laughs> I went back you know there. What? There was nothing. <laughs> you know what it is? You got Snoop Dogg is uh, hopping on your train, hot boxing. Yeah, he's in the he's in the duper just chilling back there. Yeah, that's what it's detected. Yep. They're like your rear dupers just uh, blazing. No, that's Snoop Dogg. Yep. Nate says, yeah, Arizona blew up. 62,000 in 2012. Yeah, geez. Yeah. Yeah, I live in Montana now, and uh, it's no better. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, because everybody's leaving California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said earlier, I was real serious. Me and the wife are real serious about maybe moving to Arizona, but we like the Seligman in the higher elevation Arizona, and it just seemed like he couldn't get a well. And I don't know. That's crazy. Maybe it was too deep, or water table that is all right as soon as we see the signal indication up here then we'll get back to speed I'm just running this to how you would have to in real life just give you guys some perspective when you have things like that happen you gotta slow roll it for a long way sometimes there's times where you get a certain detector you have a bad order car and there's nowhere to set it out so you have to do 10 miles an hour for like 30 miles I've heard stories of that dim rules Yeah, up north, uh, it's expensive like everywhere. Alright, here we go.
Yep, it's really uh, pricey up here right now. Everyone's moving to Idaho, Montana, Arizona. Um, I like it up here, but you you gotta like the cold. So, if you don't like the cold for a long period of time, then uh, you won't be very happy. Here we go! Line this guy up. Pose for twenty nine. So I had a request, Martin, to make a map on Transport Fever 2, San Diego to L.A. Oh. I think that would be a great run, huh? That'd be nice. You could also, uh, you'd have the nuclear power plant and the uh, Marine Corps base. Yeah, for sure. I'll have to make those. Currently, right now, I'm making the uh, coastline. Basically from San Luis Obispo down to Oxnard Camarillo. And I got uh, Simi Valley is the end of the other side of the map. The Tescadero is the end of the other side of the map from that. So. We're back to speed. If anything, we're over speeding right now. But hey, that's alright. at dynamics so if we would have gone 56 right now we would have been decertified but hey I'm only at 55 so we're good Yeah, now you got the uh, Montana Rail Link up here. Unfortunately, it sounds like they're going back to you guys. They're going back to the BNSF, or else that would be a nice place to work. They give you stock options, and it sounds like they treat you pretty well. They even got uh, 24 hours off in between runs, base minimum. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. I was like, what? I used to do 10 hours, like, all the time. It was funny, uh, this physical therapist I'm going to, she has a good friend of hers her, who works for the Montana Rail Link, and since the BNSF has taken over, it's going to like 12, I think. And he's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I might have to quit. <laughs> wow. I'm like, dude, I used to do 10. Yeah. For months. You might as well just buy an RV and just camp out right next to your, you know, where you have to report to. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, when it's just 12, shit, or 10. Yeah. Lander 44, how serious are roads about overspeed or even going a little over the limit? Um, so they usually give you like a 5 mile an hour buffer. We got a manifest train today, so those are pretty much always 50 miles an hour. Even if we're good for 70, which we are through here, I believe. So if you were to overspeed by 5 miles an hour, if you hit that 56 mile an hour mark, the system these days with uh, PTC, positive train control, it'll narc you. So, Omaha, Nebraska would hear about it. Back in the old days, as long as it was nice and flat, you could cut out the automatic brake or the train's air brakes, and then that turns off the black box. So then they can't tell how fast you're going. So I heard stories of old SP engineers or going across the desert. They would turn off their automatic and they'd get to 93 miles an hour in the freight train. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking. Hauling. <laughs> but these days there's a lot of technology spying on you. You got the cameras in the cab, you got software and the computer. You can't really get away with a whole lot anymore, but typically, like uh, Notch 8 and 8 just said, 3 is free. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're going 2, 3 miles over, not a big deal, but once you start getting up towards 5 miles an hour more, then you're literally going to get knocked on by the technology, so... I went through a switch one time, it was rated for 50 miles an hour. And we did, uh, like, 58 through it. That was pretty fun. It was definitely a 50-mile-an-hour switch, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> That's what happens when you're coming down the hill in dynamics, and then your dynamics stop working. That's the result. <laughs> That's why using air brakes is the best, in my opinion. Kevin Kirkland, do they monitor it in real time? Technically, they do. There might not be somebody like actively watching you, but they have all their trains up on a board in Omaha, and they can see wherever you're at real time and your speed. And, uh, yeah, because, I mean, they told us that there's people actually watching the cameras and the inward-facing cameras in the cab. I don't know how real that was, but... Could have been a scare tactic, but who knows. But yeah, they got technology just like everything else these days. So, <coughs> that's why it's not as fun as it used to be. You got so much uh, people looking over your shoulder all the time. I've only known of a couple of instances where PTC actually saved uh, some guys from a bad situation head-on. A couple head-on derailments could have happened. Maybe if there hadn't been PTC. We had uh, some lumber cars come out of a yard in Montclair the brakes just stopped working on them they've been sitting there for like two weeks not moved or anything so the air bled off and the handbrakes didn't work apparently rolled out of the yard and then there's a metrolink coming head on with it oh. luckily there was a guy who i actually trained he was a student of mine he, he saw it happen so he jumped on the lumber cars and tied the brakes and got it stopped and the metrolink was able to stop in time too that could have been bad all right, we'll see you next time, Nate. You have a good one. We'll be back on at some point. If I don't see a, a 
have fun going back to work. <laughs> Yay, sleepless nights. And the newer locomotives, like the new, new ones, um, there's supposedly a microphone underneath the cap so they can actually listen to what you're saying. But oh my god. Who knows how real that is, you know? Yeah. I was told that, though, by one of the head roundhouse guys in the whole system, so... If there's anybody that probably knows, I'd imagine it was him. Yeah, but it's a U piece of a UP equipment. Does it really work? <laughs> probably not. That's the question. I mean, I know we definitely tested it to see if, you know, we got to talk it to. Yeah, oh yeah, you know me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We bogged down quite a bit. That's my fault. Uh, how far away are we still? Oh, we're still a little ways. I'm trying to get to that siding. Engine off. <laughs> Our engine died. <laughs> Fuel pump failure. <laughs> so now I'm just controlling the other units with my dead unit. That's funny. So they still do what I do, we're just down one unit. At least you're not going up the hill, you're on the flat part now. Oh, yeah, that would have killed us, man. Yeah. The UP, baby. Yep. The only units still working are all those old SP units. <laughs> Who knows, maybe a few of them went down too. Mm. So my plan is, is I'm going to try to get to Dennis, Denise, whatever that is, siding. And we'll pause and save there for the day and then in the future we're going to run up to Mojave and then we got to Switch out cars, pick up cars, and then we'll haul those to Bakersfield. I think Dennis is with two ends, and it, Denise is with one. Yeah. I think I it's... That's how you do it. Yeah, I think it's Denise, but hey. No. Fuel pump failure. So, uh, that means this thing is uh, dead for sure. Can you hear your own thoughts now, Kyle? Nope. Gotcha. Coming into Palmdale Junction here pretty soon. Alright, right on. Hopefully next time Otto will do his job, huh? on Rock Auto looking up suspension parts for the F-150. <laughs> He's on Craigslist planning his fleet of F-150s. Yeah. In the driveway there's like three F-150s and they're all, you need a ladder to get into them. Yeah. 
He's got one like 90s F-150 and one modern one. Yeah. The 90s one is what he jumps at Glamis. <laughs> and they're all, they're all got the wrap with like three different monster flavors. <laughs> He's a monster billboard. Yeah. I double, I double honked it. Oh man. Oh hey, that's a different kind of signal. It's so quiet up here now. I don't know what to do. Is there a way to fix this? I think you actually, if you take your, like if I take this unit, there's a refueling pad in Bakersfield, I think that will like repair it if you set it on that pad for like a certain amount of time. Wow. Yeah. So another thing with this game, you know, you got all these things that come up randomly. So that's a cool thing. Pondale. Take it to the yard. There's a service area. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, do you know if the one in Bakersfield to fix it. Jeez, like every trip I've had, I've broken a unit. Welcome to the UP. Yeah. Run it till you have to do maintenance. Yeah. That's our motto. It's Looks like, like a Penske big rig. <laughs> Alright, what do we got coming up here? 35. Two miles. So we gotta get down there. So that's probably the turnout for Palmdale that we gotta slow down for. Throttle up, we'll set some air, you know the deal, if you've been watching. Depot has maps, so it show exactly where to park them. Alright, cool, I'll have to look that up. This thing's going to be dead with me for a while. Probably another one or two episodes of this at least. I was not phased. Don't worry, bro. We got five more. <laughs> it's all down here from here, bro. <laughs> oh, except for, you know, to hatch people, bro. <laughs> I'll pour some of my monster in the field tank. You'll throw right up. Do you try pushing more buttons, bro? <laughs> So quiet up here. Oh. Coming up on Palmdale. Got a light set on it. We're dragging it right now. Instead of using dynamics. Why? Because why not? Uh, I worked for the Union Pacific for two years. Worked in the Los Angeles service unit, so Cone Pass was primarily what I did, but I worked in the West Colton Yard, 
Went from you from uh, West Colton to Yuma, Long Beach to Yuma, Long Beach to Yermo, Yermo to West Colton. Worked a couple different locals and all the different yard jobs in West Colton. So now we got the 35 speed board. So if you notice the last one was slanted, that means we have a mile, two miles to get down to 35 or less. Now we're hitting the speed board, so the front end of this train needs to be 35 or less as we cross that board. We're at 32, so we're looking good. On a green signal. Once the rear end clears up, then we'll see what we can do. We got another yellow board coming up. <clears throat> we are in the lovely town of Palmdale. So once our rear end clears this speed post right there. We're good for 70, but we're really only good for 50 because we're a manifest train. Oh man, I was hitting that bell real good and now it didn't want to go. So we're right at 35 right now. So we need to slow her down a little bit. <clears throat> <laughs> you know what I should start doing, dude, is uh, <laughs> every time I got a unit that goes down, like, the next possible spot, just, like, leave it. <laughs> Drop, yeah, just leave it by. Yeah. <laughs> and then as, because I saved this game, so as time will go on, I'm basically playing in the same world environment. So as time goes on, there'll be dead power everywhere. <laughs> You'll be, like, lashing up. There'll be, like... 20 units in a siding just all lashed <laughs> together that are all dead yeah and then we'll have to make an episode where I go out get the units and bring them back for repairs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, UP's like that's a good idea we'll just make more sidings and put all the useless power on them yeah yeah Alright, let's cheat. Alright, we're clear. Let's boogie. We'll kick off the brakes. And we'll haul. Do you have a... What well, should be a red over yellow, which is more like an orange over yellow, so... Now let's see what we got here, because we should have a yellow going into the siding. Not a red. Okay, we got a red over yellow. That's correct.
Let's see here. All right. We're looking good. UP detector milepost four one two point zero. The detector's working. UP. This is the Metrolink track to the left, exclusively Metrolink. So we're technically on single track right now. You can tell by it's way better maintained. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we come into the siding. We got our stretcher. Oh, jeez. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I really don't. Four twenty. Four twenty. See, it shows you can come into these sightings pretty hard if you do it right. I'm already down to sixteen. But if I wanted to, you could go way in, charge way in, set the air drag it like I'm doing right now and all you gotta do is throttle off to come to a stop because the brakes are already applied Throw into the chat what you guys would like to see in the future with uh, videos, live streams, whatever. I pretty much play all the different railroad games besides your regular train simulator, train sim world. I got the newest trains 2022, been testing that out. Got selected as a tester, so if you'd like to see anything from that, let me know. tough thing about a video game is you can't feel the train and that's a big part of running it in real life so you're literally feeling what it's doing all the time that's how you kind of judge these things like coming to a siding 
can't do that on a computer screen. That's a big part of it. So I'm just kind of guessing. You can tell when it's picking up speed, when it's getting bogged down, just by the feel. Even before, or maybe you can see it on your screen. Got a nine pound set. We're in run five. We're dragging it into the siding. Getting pretty close to the other end. Should be well within the siding. So, this way, if you judge it right, it's a lot easier than if you're using dynamics. Cause all you gotta do is throttle off. You could race right up to this thing, pretty good. In the future, I'll have to try to do it a lot better than this time. <clears throat> Get a little bit closer. stopped set the air a little bit more 10 pound set full independent throttle off all the way reverser to center the reverser and Apply the brakes, the handbrakes, that is. Oh, yeah, <laughs> look at the brakes on these things, dude. <laughs> this thing's smoking. So we gotta tie our train down. So you gotta apply all the handbrakes on all the locomotives. We got problems. Smoking brakes, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you gotta apply some brakes on the rail cars, depending on how heavy it is. So we'll do like six brakes. That should hold it, no problem. These are just preventative in case the air bleeds off for making a brake application. You got hand brakes on to keep the train in place. It's pretty standard. Depends on, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, got that. Depends on the grader on how heavy the train is, is how many hand brakes you got to apply on the rail cars. At least two is the rule. Two hand brakes on the cars and all the locomotives. Jeez, this thing's smoking. I feel like we're going to lose more locomotives before this is over. We're going to lose more engines. Yeah. <laughs> brakes just smoking. <laughs> That's how we roll, brother. I'm supposed to have a handbrake on back here, too. <laughs> These brakes are smoking, too. What do we do? Yeah. It's almost like it's acting like there was a handbrake on it. Because if you think about it, that hot wheel detector is detecting everything that has smoke coming out of it. So that's weird. Weird. All right, so that's our stats. How many maps or locations are in run eight? So the game comes with needles to Barstow 
for the BNSF, which also includes Yermo to Daggett, which is where the UP gets on. The, uh, what do they call it? I believe it's called the Needle Subdivision there in Daggett. And then it runs from Barstow to Mojave on the BNSF's Mojave Sub. And then you jump on the UP and you can run all the way to Bakersfield. There you got UP Bakersfield Yard, BNSF Bakersfield Yard. You can run down to Seiko on the UP. Um, and then you can run south from Mojave all the way down the Highland Siding, which is at the top of the Cone Pass. So... Um, yeah, it's, it comes with a good game. Did I bail the locos? Yeah, I believe I did every time. Maybe I forgot once, and that was the uh, reason. They kept overheating the brakes. Yeah, that seems to be a thing. But yeah, I was uh, I was bailing. So we'll try again. This is the end of this episode. Next time we will pick up from here. We'll run to Mojave. We gotta switch out our train. We gotta grab some cars from in Bakersfield, add it to our train, so then we could go on to Bakersfield. So that might take a while. So yeah, but typically do it this type of, this time of day. So keep a lookout for that. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. That helps us a lot. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Even if you dislike it, what what I could do better, whatever. Just throw that in there. So, anyways, guys, we'll check you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye.